Hello friends and subscribers and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video today from Jerusalem on the 18th of December 2023 and I continue to receive very nice messages from some folks in Ireland who are saying that my um, unashamed, my extremely pro-Israel perspective, pro-Zionist perspective is welcomed by them in the, the constellation of voices talking about uh, uh israel in ireland uh publicly on twitter x i receive a lot of very very negative messages as well as a few death threats nothing i'm not able to uh deal with but it's interesting in that i think the public support or the public messages i get from ireland tend to I mean, it tend to be made uh privately and the uh endless grief that i guess is uh a lot of it is public so there's this kind of asymmetry and i think it's understandable people don't want to draw the ire of the anti-israel side upon themselves too readily um but anyway so that's why i'm making this video i want to make a video today about ireland's funding of uh, anti-israel ngos uh the irish government's uh funding of them and this is uh utilizing a report from ngo monitor that was published on uh, updated i should say on february 22nd 2023 so this is a report that i've been seeing on the internet for a few years now and I decided it would be worth making a video about, not just for the Irish context, uh, but also because I think this is relevant for a lot of Western governments and how they fund the Palestinians. Because you would kind of assume that, well, money goes from these Western, you know, these pro-peace or ostensibly, ostensibly pro-peace Western governments like Ireland, Sweden, the Netherlands, what have you, you know, into some kind of an EU pot. And you kind of expect that that pot goes on the other side to you know, uh, wheat and flour and building schools and stuff that is kind of both audited and unobjectionable. And the reality is not that. A lot of the money that is collected goes into um, very, very politicized. And sometimes NGOs that are uh, have links actually to prescribed terrorist organizations, as we will see. So let's jump into the page here. And before I do that, let's talk firstly about NGO Monitor who they are, um, founded in 2002, or what they say they are. Founded in 2002, NGO Monitor is a globally recognized research institute promoting democratic values and good governance. We work to ensure that decision makers and civil society operate in accordance with the principles of accountability, transparency, and universal human rights. Um, we published, uh, we published, sorry, I'm changing the, the font size around and messing everything up here. We published fact-based re fact research and independent analysis about NGOs, their funders, and other stakeholders, but primarily in the context of the Arab-Israeli conflict. And uh, I would say that's a little, just a little, little bit misleading. Uh, what they really do, this is my take and my description of, if you ask me to describe what is NGO Monitor, I would say they're kind of really a Hasbara organization, uh, which is highlighting problematic money flows or problematic NGOs in the context of the uh, conflict here. That would be my description of what they actually do. Um, and I've said that I think Hasbara has its place, although uh, sometimes it yeah, does, and this is my criticism of Hasbara, uh, which is you know a word used to describe broadly Israeli public diplomacy, people would call it propaganda. Uh, my criticism is that it tends to really uh, make, things, make things black and white, and uh, that's not often, not often the case in the real world. But nevertheless, here's what they have to say regarding Ireland. Here is their activity. So Ireland, via its program for overseas development called Irish Aid, provides millions of euros through direct and indirect funding processes to politicized NGOs operating in Ireland, Israel, the West Bank and Gaza. Organizations receiving Irish funding lead campaigns and political activities that are inconsistent with Ireland's policies to promote peace as well as a two state framework in the Arab Israeli conflict. And some of these groups also promote anti-Semitic rhetoric and have alleged ties to the PFLP, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, which is a designated terrorist organization by the US, the EU, Canada, and Israel. And in 2021, um, so this is again, slightly, we're looking, really, we should have more updated figures, but these might be the latest ones that they got or the last update. In 2021, Ireland's Official Development Assistance Package, or ODA, to the West Bank, West Bank and Gaza 
i.e. the Palestinian Palestinian controlled areas was just shy of 11 million, 10.8 million. So let's firstly look at direct funding from the Irish government, Irish aid funding to Palestinian NGOs. Uh, so just to remember that Irish aid is the uh, development, uh, over, it's official program for overseas development. So in 2021, Adamir received 81,000 euro from Irish aid. Adamir is an official PFLP affiliate and several of Adamir's current and former employees as well as lawyers that work for Adamir are linked to the PFLP. The PFLP uh, has a long history of, of terrorism against Israel. I'm just, this is just filling in the gaps from my own personal knowledge, uh, particularly uh, airplane hijackings. They have a paramilitary wing, but really, you know, the distinctions between the political parties and the paramilitary wings like Hamas and Al-Qassam um, are tenuous at best. But their paramilitary wing, to the extent that it's a separate organization, did participate in the, I think that's the Ali Mustafa Brigade. Uh, they participated in October 7th. Um, you know, they're fighters slash paramilitaries. So they're really, you know, they're basically a terrorist organization. On October the 22nd, 2021, the Israeli Ministry of Defense declared Adamir to be a terrorist organization because of that association with the PFLP. Um, and we can go on reading about Adamir. Now let's talk about Al-Haq. Al-Haq, uh, which means the law in Arabic, received 81,000 from Irish aid, uh, the same amount as Adamir in 2021. And Al-Haq is a leader in anti-Israel lawfare campaigns. And this is actually, because this article is a little bit out of date, Al-Haq was actually um, one of the Palestinian NGOs that Israel shut down for incitement to terror uh, or, clo or raided their offices. Uh, that happened, I believe, was it this year, 2023? A lot's happened. This, I think it was this year. Um, so Al-Haq is a leader in anti-Israel lawfare campaigns. And on October 2021, the... Israeli MOD declared Al-Haq a terrorist organization because it is part of a network of organizations, again, that operate on behalf of the PFLP. In May 2018, Visa, MasterCard and Amex shut down online credit card donations to Al-Haq due, due to the group's ties to the PFLP and um, is directed by or was directed by Shawan uh, Jabarin. So another 81,000 was handed out to another Palestinian NGO. This one was the Palestinian Center for Human Rights, and they're also involved in anti-Israel lawfare and BDS campaigns. And uh, they, like these other groups, ignore the existence of terrorism against Israeli civilians. Uh, the PHCR describes Israel's policies as apartheid and accuses Israel of ethnic cleansing, war crimes, and the Judea Judea Judaization of Jerusalem, while regularly distorting or denying the context of terrorism against Israeli civilians. Um, I'm just skipping and trying to kind of just give a broad brush overview. Some details I think don't really add a whole lot to the to the picture, but the picture that's emerging should be pretty clear. In 2021, Jerusalem Legal Aid and Human Rights Centre, JLAC, received 81,000 from Irish aid. And JLAC is highly active in promoting BDS, lobbying international bodies and utilising highly inflammatory rhetoric. In 2010, JLAC published the first edition of its book, we have names, we have a homeland, which alleges that brutality and sadism is the true face of Zionism and the state of occupation, and accuses Israel of savage, abhorrent, and fascist practices. In 2021, Miftah received 81,000 from Irish aid. Miftah regularly promotes resistance, and uh, th this is, they say, a euphemism for terror attacks, which is something I've been trying to highlight through my work recently of point when I point to extremist rhetoric in Ireland. People don't seem to understand that resistance in the Palestinian vocabulary means terrorism. It's called Mokawama in Arabic. And I ask people, look up what Hamas stands for. Harakat al Mokawama al Islamiya, the Islamic resistance movement. And we don't need anyone to tell us what uh, Hamas interpret Mokawama as standing for. So uh, when people like uh, Richard Boyd Barris endorse Palestinian resistance, they are endorsing terrorism. And I think a lot of people don't really, they think resistance, oh, that means just kind of, you know, a diplomatic resist. No, it doesn't. It means in their, in, in the in the use they intend, it means blowing stuff up, terrorism, resistance, as in October 7th style resistance, killing civilians. 
So uh, in March 2013, Miftah published an article written by Nawa Al-Zaru that repeated the anti-Semitic blood libel the Jews use Christian blood to bake Passover matzah. Um, Irish aid funding to Israeli NGOs. And this is also interesting just to see who, well, they're funding some Israeli NGOs. But look at, look at the, uh, look, 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 look at who the Israeli NGOs are. In 2021, Bimkom received 81k from Irish aid. Bimkom regularly files pe petitions in an attempt to alter government policies related to spatial planning, planning procedures in Bedouin communities. Gisha received 81k. Gisha employs apartheid rhetoric and vocabulary based on international law human rights to promote a partisan political and ideological agenda. Yish Dean, um, almost 81k, central to the allegation that Israeli investigative and court systems are unable to in investigate allegations of wrongdoing and is part of a wider lawfare strategy of pressing war crimes cases. So basically, uh, one of the, the point here, and then another one criticizing um, the building in Area C, are their, their Ira meme, um, promotes a one-sided Palestinian narrative accusing Israel of the Judaization of Jerusalem. So basically, the Israeli, N Israeli NGOs that they fund are anti-Israel, as well as a Palestinian NGO. So the whole overall approach is completely biased and anti-Israel. Irish aid funding to NGOs active, and we can see just a list here of the, uh, of the funding. Um, indirect funding mechanisms from uh, Irish aid to Israeli and Palestinian NGOs so in 2021, Troker, the Overseas Development Agency of the Catholic Church in Ireland, received 22.7 million euro from Irish aid. Troker funds highly politicized and biased NGOs that support BDS, engage in anti-peace rhetoric against Israel, including Badil al Haq. Uh, these are all anti, I'm familiar with most of them, and they're, they're, they're correct. They're all incredibly anti-Israel. Troker does not disclose the extent of these partnerships, nor the amount, amounts given to these NGOs. And in opposition to Irish government policy, Trocora conducts campaigns in Europe calling for sanctions against Israel and suspension of trade agreements. Trocor was among the 22 NGOs involved in the Trading Way piece, How Europe Helped Sustain Legal Israeli Settlements, uh, which lobbied the EU and national governments to wage political warfare through economic sanctions, a form of BDS against Israel. In 2018, Trocora supported the, the infamous uh, Occupied Territories Bill, which attempted to criminalize the importing or sale to Ireland of settlement goods and the provision of a, of a, a tenth provision of settlement services. Christian Aid Ireland got 5.6 million from Irish Aid and they fund in turn highly politicized and anti-Israel NGOs like al Haq, B'Tselem, again an anti-Israel, technically Israeli, but anti-Israel um, and uh, so on and so forth. So you get the overall picture. They have more details here. And then the indirect funding, as I said, the ind it's called indirect because it goes through Trocura or another one of these uh, developments. So the Irish aid gathers the money from the taxpayer, then disperses it to these organizations. And then they in turn fund these organizations. And where, we, where money is available through the intermediary, uh, the amounts are listed there. And then via the UN, um, in 2021, Ireland provided 315k to the UN OCHA, uh, which is in also very anti-Israel, UNICEF, you can go on and so forth. So basically, the Irish uh, taxpayer um, is funding a lot of anti-Israel activity. And uh, none of this, of course, needless to say, I mean, you just look at the at the so-called Israeli NGOs they chose are uh, it's all basically anti uh, anti israel um and it's uh, i i've you know i've made the point before but i'll just make it again ireland is not pursuing a new a, an approach towards this conflict that is neutrality is a myth that deserves to be put to bed regarding how ireland approaches this conflict uh and you can see one manifestation of that is the way that it funds these ngos very very selectively and very deliberately uh, in a very one-sided anti-Israel manner. Thanks for watching today's video. Uh, this has been Daniel Rose. I'll bring you this video from Jerusalem. To get more videos uh, from me about stuff to do with Israel and Jerusalem, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and have a very good day.